Hi, everybody, and welcome to the King's Bay yeah. Plowshares webinar, uh, Disarm and Divest during COVID-19. Uh, we're all going to have a conversation for the next hour. Uh, thanks to this miraculous technology online, and it got me to thinking about something that was said by Jackson Brown after the Three Mile Island accident at a big rally in Washington. He said, appropriate technology is technology that doesn't kill people. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, a good starting point for talking about uses of science and what's involved with the Trident and nuclear weapons. We're going to be hearing from people who uh, were sentenced uh, in October 2019 for their nonviolent and symbolic <laughs> disarmament action at the Kings Bay Naval Base in Georgia. Uh, their sentencing is scheduled for May 28th and 29th. And uh, after we hear from those six folks, because one of them is currently in jail, uh, Steve Kelly's been there for two years. Uh, after we hear from those six folks, we'll also be hearing from three guest speakers, Cornell West, uh, Medea Benjamin, Jeremy Scahill. Uh, so right now we're going to uh, start first uh, by hearing from Mark Colville. Hi, uh, thank you. I'm, uh, I was asked to uh, start out and give a little overview for those who uh, may be unfamiliar with the Kings Bay uh, Plowshare 7. Um, this is a, a, a community that formed around an action at Kings Bay Naval Base in Southern Georgia in, uh, on April 4th of 2018. Others will uh, talk about some of the significance of that date. Um, uh, a plowshares action is um, is basically a, a movement that started in the early 80s, and um, it seeks to enflesh the uh, one of the prophecies of the great Hebrew prophet Isaiah of uh, nations hammering swords into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks, um, and not teaching or learning war anymore. Um, the, the plowshares movement enfleshes that by taking the symbols of hammers and um, uh, household blood, I mean, uh, our own blood and household hammers, uh, to these sites where nuclear weapons are, are hidden and stored um, and deployed. Um, and we do a symbolic enactment of the prophecy of Isaiah chapter 2, verse 4. So we did this in Kings Bay, as I said, in, in April of 2018. Um, since then, it's been quite a, uh, a long journey of, uh, of legal uh, wrangling, uh, trial, uh, pre-trial, trial, and now we're at a point where we've, we've all been found guilty of three uh, felonies and a misdemeanor, um, and we're awaiting sentencing, which, uh, which very well may happen, is scheduled for the end of, of May, the 28th and the 29th, um, and we'll get into that a little more later. Um, two, I want to mention two things that, that the seven of us all have in common. Um, uh, and this is not common to all plowshares actions, but first of all, we're steeped in a uh, in the rich tradition of Catholic social teaching. Um, our, it, it has informed all of our consciences and in many ways uh, uh, pushed us to go down to Georgia. Um, and secondly, all of us uh, come from decades of walking with, uh, with poor people, victims, as the Bible would use the word, the anawim of God, you know that we've all um, in various ways been walking with people uh, who are the victims of these policies um, and the victims of empire um, and tried to live in solidarity with them. Um, and so when personally, I've, I've always felt uh, a real strong um, uh, responsibility to make a connection between the, the Catholic worker table that I live at in New Haven, Connecticut, uh, New Haven, uh, the Amistad Catholic worker We've been here since 1994. Uh, uh, so to make a connection between our common table and and uh, Kings Bay, um, when I'm when I'm asked to describe what a plowshares action is, I I say it's to me it's an unmasking of the demon of militarism that every day lays waste to my neighborhood. Um, uh, that these weapons are 
are built and developed and uh, used without, without even being launched, they're being used every day uh, in a war against uh, neighborhoods uh, all over the country. Um, it's, uh, it's interesting to me, and I think that the, the COVID uh, pandemic here has really, it, it, it's almost like a plowshare's action in the sense of, of this unmasking of the demon of militarism. As a culture, we've so internalized war that we've essentially lost our capacity to conceive of any kind of national or collective unity that doesn't express itself as a war, um, a war on something. Um, and these wars always, uh, as, as really the Bible and, the, and Catholic social teaching tells us, that uh, wars always, the first and the last victims of war are always the poor. And uh, our neighborhoods have been the victims of, of our war making. And I'm thinking, well, particularly the most obvious one would be the war on drugs, you know, or the war on crime. You know, we, we, we take up these things as wars and wars create victims, they demand victims. Um, uh, so Plowshare's actions uh, unmask that. Um, here in Connecticut, it's, it's, uh, we're actually in New Haven, kind of in a, an interesting place because you've got, first of all, the uh, electric boat uh, in Groton is, is now undertaking the new Columbia class, uh, development of the Columbia class submarines. In other words, all of the Trident submarines, uh, which I don't have time to explain what they are, but uh, others will explain the destructive capacity of them. They're all being replaced. Um, as part of uh, an Obama administration uh, plan to upgrade the nuclear arsenal at the cost of over a trillion dollars over the next 20 years. Um, the, each of the Trident submarines are going to be replaced by a Columbia class excuse me, uh, submarine. Um, and that work is taking place now. The governor of Connecticut has uh, declared that uh, electric boat is an essential operation. And so it has not been closed during the pandemic. Uh, the, the production of these submarines, uh, the Columbia class, has been ramped up, in fact, a year ago. Uh, uh, it was supposed to start in 2021, but the, the Trump administration has pushed that uh, schedule up. So it's, it's actually booting up now. Um, and, of course, people uh, are getting temporary jobs there and risking their lives to go uh, develop these, these submarines. Um, $44 billion in the current uh, military budget for nuclear weapons. Um, we now have an annual nuclear, uh, an annual uh, military budget of three quarters of a trillion dollars. Um, this uh, represents the absolute theft from the poor, as all the folks have said. Um, I, I, I know I'm running out of time here, but um, and I'll, I'll just end it by saying um, that the crowning uh, image uh, to me, of this of this whole experience of being locked down and all, has been the um, this, this week there was this military flyover with with bomber jets uh, flying over the cities, and to me it just um, it, it's like the crown of ineptness uh, that our government is expressing. They're based, <laughs> I mean, here are billions and billions of dollars, uh, you know, in in PPE you know, or in, in uh, protection for hospital workers that, is, that uh, is flying over our cities, almost mocking us. Um, it's, uh, it, it's just the crowning achievement, the crowning uh, uh, image of the ineptness, the dysfunction, and the, and the bankruptcy of this government to do anything uh, functional because we have sold our souls to uh, the military-industrial complex. We don't know how to do anything else with war. Uh, I'll leave it there for the moment.